Hello everyone, you're watching The Last Word and I'm Maria Shakil. The fragile four-day ceasefire for hostage release agreement between Israel and Hamas is set to end today. 40 Israeli hostages have been released by Hamas, 13 on Friday, 13 on Saturday and 14 on Sunday. Some of them are dual nationals including four-year-old Abigali Edan who is an uh, US-Israeli citizen. Hamas also released 18 foreign nationals as part of separate negotiations. Of the Palestinian prisoners released, 117 are women and children. Can and will this truce be extended? What are the diplomatic channels that are currently at work? These are the questions we explore on The Last Word, but first up, the story. In times of despair, some sighs of relief as Hamas releases another batch of hostages in exchange for Palestinian prisoners held by Israel. There have been some hiccups, but reports suggest both parties are looking to extend the four-day ceasefire deal, with mediators Egypt, Qatar and the US also pressing for an extended truce. I'd like to see the pause go on as long as prisoners kept coming out. According to the deal, the ceasefire can be extended if Hamas releases 10 hostages per day after the four-day period expires. But Hamas has to locate dozens of hostages who are allegedly held by other gangs in Gaza. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met with troops inside the Gaza Strip on Sunday and said that there are three goals for Israel in this war. Goal one, eliminate Hamas. Goal two, rescue all hostages. And goal three, ensure Gaza doesn't remain a threat to Israel. Netanyahu urged troops not to let anything stop Israel from reaching its goals. Meanwhile, situation remained tense in the occupied West Bank as more than 60 Palestinians were arrested by Israeli troops overnight. Israel is expected to continue its brutal offensive in Gaza once the ceasefire ends, something the mediators are hoping to prevent. With Vishal Vivek, Bureau Report, NDTV. And let me go straight to Tel Aviv where Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner is joining us. He's a senior spokesperson with IDF. Colonel Lerner, I appreciate your time. Uh, what is the future of this ceasefire? Thank you. As you rightly pointed out, there are three goals to our war. Uh, to eliminate Hamas, to bring home all the hostages and make sure that the Gaza Strip cannot be used as a staging ground for terrorism against Israel. So from our perspective, once we achieve these three goals, we will be able to continue. Uh, the reality of the ground currently is that we are in the midst of an effort to bring, bang, bring back as many hostages as possible. This is taking place through negotiations beyond the military. And the military, in the meantime, is taking the necessary steps in order to be prepared for any eventuality. Um, we are currently um, taking the necessary steps to be to enable and to facilitate the evacuation of the hostages to safety as the as this as this day develops. Um, I can't unfortunately can't confirm at this hour here uh, uh, in Israel that the fourth uh, installment of hostages has been released. Israel uh, is looking in anticipation Israeli society is currently gathered around television sets, watching, hoping to see more Israelis come home today. Uh, while you have ceasefire in Gaza, Israel has rammed up airstrikes in West Bank. My question is, how will you really build trust? So there, those two things are not connected. They're from our perspective, Hamas is the governing authority of the Gaza Strip. It is the authority and entity that built a terrorist army to attack Israel, as they did on the 7th of October, brutally, mercilessly massacring uh, tens and, and over 1,200 Israelis and abducting over 240 others, uh, Israelis and foreign nationals. So the two arenas, while they may seem connected, they are, are not connected factually. Uh, we have seen an uptick in the West Bank of Hamas terrorist activity in an attempt to create another arena, an arena of, of uh, 
instability and our activities in the West Bank are in order to maintain and pursue terrorists before they're able to conduct their acts. Uh, but indeed, the two, two arenas are separate. There is a concern, but we are very much focused on Hamas in the Gaza Strip in order to make sure and achieve the, uh, that we can achieve our goals of preventing them from ever well, wielding the, the sword of death above our heads ever again, because we know what they do if they can. They chop it off. And uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu met Israeli troops inside Gaza. Uh, Colonel Lena, is the Israeli army planning to stay inside Gaza? The IDF is currently positioned within the Gaza Strip, in the northern Gaza Strip. We are currently uh, learning our lessons from the last seven weeks in order to be prepared for the needs to continue our offensives against uh, Hamas, our offensive capabilities, wherever Hamas is hiding, wherever their leadership is taking refuge, um, and in order to defeat Hamas once and for all. So I would say we are taking the necessary steps in order to be prepared uh, for the instruction that the government gives us to pursue Hamas and make sure that they never have, never pose a threat to Israel ever again. Indeed, the forces on the ground are in defensive operational pause uh, over the last three days and now in day four. Uh, that pause has been maintained and we are protecting our forces in order to make sure that Hamas don't take advantage of this hiatus in order to conduct attacks against us. But it, it is a reality that could develop further and we need to be pre prepared for every type of development on the field. And the reports that are coming in of, of the health of those captives who have released, could you give us more details about it? So obviously, w most important is to take the hostages home, uh, embrace them, give them a, sa a, a safe place, a place of security, and I would say um, rehabilitation. Uh, I can't imagine what they've been through in the last 50, 51 days already. Um, and indeed, they are teaching us and sharing a lot from their experiences. Uh, and it was from very clear almost from day one that, that Hamas had taken them into their network of tunnels, had utilized the hospitals for, uh, to, to take them through to the tunnels. And indeed, we are uh, learning a lot from them. I think there's, it's important not to elaborate too much on this. We are obviously still in a state of war with Hamas. Uh, we intend on defeating them and dismantling them as a terrorist organization, as a terrorist entity, as a terrorist government in the Gaza Strip. Yes, and um, because of all the Palestinian prisoners released, there were six, 76, in fact, who were in administrative detention, meaning they did not ha know the charges against them and were not involved in a legal process of charging or trial. Could you give us more details of these uh, Palestinian uh, you know, prisoners who have been sent back as part of this entire exchange? Uh, the vast majority of the pres Palestinian prisoners that have been released over the last three days are convicted felons, people that have tried, uh, in some cases succeeded in attacking Israelis, whether stabbing attacks or explosive devices. This is the vast majority of those. And indeed, there is an ongoing war effort against uh, Hamas. And when Hamas are calling for the release of prisoners, it is a component of the uh, status of the framework that has been designated to the IDF in this uh, reality. So I can't comment specifically, but it's important to remember those that are being released, those, that are, those Palestinians that uh, are being released to Hamas. There are people that wished on, acted on, and tried to conduct acts of terrorism against Israel, or were planning to do so. So from our perspective, there is a very clear distinction between a 10-month-old baby Kfir Bibas, who is still being held today in the hands and clutches of Hamas, and all of those that were in Israeli detention, uh, uh, those that were convicted for the crimes that they conducted, or those that intended on conducting crimes and therefore were detained in uh, various other other activities. So we need to very, be very clear in this message. There is no equivalence uh, except uh, uh, that we can accept. There is no equivalence between the Israeli hostages held unlawfully against their will, snatched from their beds uh, to those that have conducted or planned to conduct ruthless terrorist attacks against Israelis. Colonel... Uh Lena, we haven't really heard from any of the hostages who have been released. Uh, what have they told you and, and uh, 
uh, their family members about those 51 days? So, you know, we have to respect their privacy. We have to respect their understanding of the situation. We have to respect that they are have and have been a tool in the hand of Hamas uh, for so many days. Um, I think we need to respect that. I think that is what we need to understand, that they do not necessarily want to be uh, in the eye of the public at this time. Uh, and they are in a state of recuperating from the unbearable reality of being held by Hamas. Um, you know, we are learning from them. We are listening to what they're saying, but we are mostly um, re protecting them from the clutches of, of the experience of being held by Hamas. It's an important role. It's an important situation uh, that these people be protected. It is, our intrigue, our public intrigue, as far as the media coverage, is not the most important thing at this time. Yes. So what happens after these... Uh, four days uh, which led to halt of, of the war end? Um, well, so there are two options. Basically, the, the government has set out a framework for uh, 10 hostages per day for extended uh, uh, hold of fire, which is one option. And the other option is we will continue to pursue Hamas, seek them out, destroy and dismantle them as a terrorist organization, as a governing authority in the Gaza Strip. So these are currently the two options that are at hand. IDF obviously will maintain its holding positions until the government decides and instructs us accordingly. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Let me bring in my guests. Raymond Wickery is former U.S. Assistant Secretary of Commerce. We have Dinakar Prakash Srivasta, former ambassador to Iran. And Dr. Priyanka Mathur is founder, Medi Pocket USA Cross Border Care. Uh, you know, beginning with uh, you, Raymond Vickery, you know, United States certainly is hoping that this entire period of truce, which is clearly a temporary truce, uh, gets extended. Uh, but it is unlikely because, uh, given the kind of uh, you know the the, uh, the extended tension that we have seen b between both the sides. And also the sense that is coming in from Israel that the longer the truce lasts, uh, the more time Hamas gets to rebuild its capabilities and perhaps attack Israel again. Well, for, first, thanks very much for having me. Um, I think that it's important to recognize that the U.S. and India are on the same side in regard to this situation. Uh, we both uh, are fighting terrorism uh, around the world. Uh, that having been said, uh, India and the U.S. have uh, values uh, in common. Uh, and among those values are the protection of civilians and being appalled uh, by the level of destruction which is going on. Uh, India has a role to play uh, in regard to what happens next. Uh, both in terms of the conduct of uh, the war against Hamas uh, and indeed whether or not there's a two-state solution after this. Uh, it, as one statesman once said, it's much better to jaw-jaw than to kill-kill, uh, and so one hopes that uh, there will be extension. But the reality is uh, that this war, uh, just as the war against uh, ISIS uh, went on to a conclusion, uh, will occur. And so it is hoped that the values, the common values of two great democracies uh, will be invoked. Uh, India has uh, leverage uh, with uh, Israel as well as uh, with Arab states. Uh, uh, one hopes in the United States uh, that we can work together uh, to wage peace as strongly as war is being waged not only here, but uh, you look at Ukraine, you look at what can happen with uh, China, you look at the, the Pakistan situation. We have much in common, and uh, now is the time we have to come together to work on, on these problems. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Mathur, you know, uh, the sense certainly is, and, and the communication that happened between Benjamin Netanyahu and U.S. President Joe Biden was that at the end of this truce, which is like a four-day truce ending tonight, uh, would... The, the Israel will be going back to the full force and, and achieving its goals for elimination of Hamas. My question is, uh, does it also mean that, uh, does it also mean occupation of Gaza? 
You know, I one thing I would say that the wars also have laws. You know, there's an international humanitarian law for every war. So this ceasefire definitely is helping civilians more than anything because they are getting this, you know, the room to breathe. And uh, one thing I would say is to be that has been not been done in the past, you know, over a month that we are seeing is the civilians getting suffered, whether it be, you know, Palestinians in Gaza, particularly is like, you know, the young children and, and women. Now, one thing is that in war also, it is very important to protect the civilians when it comes to their survival modes, which is hospitals, you know, providing the food and the water that can, comes under the war, war laws. And uh, what we hope uh, from the U.S. side and I think are also from India and other countries supporting it is that after this four four days, you know, uh, things happen is like extension, come to talks. And as as uh, Mr. Raymond also said that either it would be a two state or one state, but it has to come to some kind of a conclusion, I would say, sooner. Uh, protecting the civilians from getting, you know, again, affected to the level where the whole Gaza gets empty. So uh, our hope is that there should be more extended talks and the, the ceasefire continues for a little more longer time. Okay, um, Ambassador, uh, Ambassador Srivastava, the role that countries in the Middle East can play uh, in this temporary truce? Well, I think the neighboring countries have a major role to play and that includes Egypt and Jordan and of course the regional heavyweight is Saudi Arabia. Qatar is already playing a role in the release of hostages. Now it depends what objective you set. If the objective is the short term is being taken care of which is a hostage release and that comes first but the long term that is two state solution is a must. And there, I think the Egyptian role is uh, very important. The success of Camp David was the formula of land for peace. And that is what is required because two-state solution will require accepting a Palestinian state. Hmm. And that state should have land. Hmm. And if the Israel's objective is that Israeli withdrawal from Gaza does not uh, lead to resurgence of Hamas or something worse, then it's important that uh, and, and if the is Israeli as well as the American uh, uh, objective is to have Palestinian authority back in control, Palestinian authority demands that this has to be part of a political settlement and that pol political settlement is two-state solution which was accepted by both sides in Oslo. Yes, so, uh Yes. There's a blueprint. It needs yes, because blueprint. the indication that is coming in from Palestinian Authority uh, was that Egypt, Qatar, US, EU, that is European Union and Spain are all working towards extending this uh, ceasefire or the truce deal. Uh, Raymond Vickery, final words to you. With Netanyahu becoming the first Israeli leader to enter Gaza and appear in Gaza as he did on Sunday, uh, since 2005, uh, is there really a possibility of extension of this truce? Well, there's a possibility of extension for a limited period of time, but uh, it, it is impossible, in my view, uh, that uh, there will be a complete ceasefire and return to the status quo. Uh, that's just not uh, going to happen. Uh, you can't uh, invade another country, uh, kill uh, 1,200 people or so, take a bunch of hostages, and then just say, well, uh, we're not going to do anything about it. Uh, Israel has a right to defend itself. The question is, how will that happen? Can it happen uh, in a way in which uh, civilians are, are protected? Uh, will there be leadership which occurs in Gaza, uh, which will displace Hamas? Uh, this is uh, important for India and the U.S. to work together to be able to come to a solution which is longer term than four days or an extension for a week or two. Uh, that is in the India's interest. It's in the U.S. interest. It's in the world interest. And it must be pursued with vigor. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Raymond Vickery, Ambassador Srivastava and Dr. Mathur.